next is erythema infectiosa. Fifth disease. I know that all of you have heard about the slab cheek to pee. Of cheeks appearance. That is because the rash for erythema infectiosum begins on the cheeks and then will begin on the trunk, arms, and legs in a very, very net like formation. It's very, it's very particular. It, that's how it appears on the patient who is infected with erythema infectiosa. Something I want to say about erythema infectiosum. Erythema infectiosum is caused by par parvovirus B19. Parvovirus B19 has a tendency to make things worse for people with anemia. If a child is diagnosed with sickle cell anemia, this infection will not go well with that child. Parvovirus B19 is very dangerous. This infection is very dangerous with somebody with sickle cell or any type of anemia because parvovirus B19 will cause reticulocytopenia on the person with sickle cell anemia or any other anemia. What is reticulocytopenia? It's another way of saying aplastic crisis. Low reticulocyte destruction of the red blood cells. So we need to be careful with our anemic population. Make sure they're away from the parvovirus B19. Do not acquire erythema infectiosum. We just need to be careful. Next, we have varicella zoster virus, known to the general population as chickenpox. How is varicella zoster virus spread? Same way as measles, same way as rubella. Actually, not directly the same, some of the things are the same. We can only add to this one contact. Varicella zoster virus is very contagious at certain points of time, though. So, certain points in time. The way the way you acquire varicella zoster virus is through exposure with respiratory droplets. Someone coughs or sneezes either around the healthy host, they will acquire varicella. They can also acquire varicella through contact with someone actively, actively having the, those lesions coming out, breaking out. Let me explain that part. Varicella zoster virus consists of the rash of varicella zoster virus consists of an itchy teardrop vesicles that blister, that break out, and then they scab. When they break out, they're contagious. When they scab, they're not contagious anymore. When will you start seeing symptoms of varicella? After this exposure, and to 21 days after, the child will develop the rash. And the rash will be there for 7 to 10 days, and then it will go away. 
How does the rash appear? Well, the rash simply starts. The rash begins on the head or the trunk. A name we have for that is centripetal. And then it will spread either here or here, and then it will spread to the extremity. This occurs 10 to 21 days after the exposure, after the sneezing and the coughing or the contact, will last for 7 to 10 days. During this time of 7 to 10 days, the patient will be exhibiting breaking and crusting over of these lesions. When they break, they're contagious. When they scab, they're no longer contagious. <clears throat> Varicella zoster virus is caused by the human herpes virus 3. Once a person, once a person recovers from varicella zoster virus, the virus does not go away. It stays dormant. It stays dormant. It resides in the central nervous system. CNS. Wait a minute about this. You're telling me that I don't have the rash anymore. I, I, I thought it was cured from varicella. You're telling me it's in, the, in our brain. Well, it is. However, it's not showing any symptoms. It's not doing anything to you. You're fine. The only thing is it resides in the central nervous system. Later in life, depending on your immune system, depending on biological life, this may or may not reactivate in your body. If you had varicella as a child, like me, then you might get a, an infection called herpes zoster virus. Herpes zoster virus is an infection that occurs with, uh, in adults through the reactivation of this virus that stayed in the CNS. And when it appears, it will appear on a dermatomal fashion. It will appear on the dermatome and affect the corresponding dorsal root ganglion of that dermatome. But that's an adult feature. We're talking about children. After this child recovers from Varicella, it will stay in the CNS, live there until it wants to come out. <clears throat> Next, I want to talk about hand foot mouth disease, the one everybody was waiting for. Let me tell you something. If you're waiting for this one, you're about to be disappointed because this doesn't happen. Hand foot mouth disease has exactly what the name has. Hand foot mouth disease. You get vesicles, vesicles, and ulcerations. vesicles in the hand and foot, and the ulcerations in the mouth. This rash, or this disease, will last for about a week, and it will go away. However, this person needs to watch out, because this person is contagious by contact. 
through contact. Contact. So be careful with this person. You see a person with a hand foot mouth disease. Do not touch that person. Wait a week and you can touch them. These are the exanthems of these are the viral exanthems. One more thing. Hand, foot, and mouth disease is caused by Coxsackie A. I'm sorry about that virus. Coxsackie A. And that's it for my lecture on the viral exanthems. Remember, there are six measles, rubella, roseola, and phantom, erythema infectiosum, and varicella zoster virus, hand foot mouth disease.